with a new series of videos where I want to share with you what is the fluff, what is the history, what is behind uh, Age of Sigmar background. I want to do this video because I really enjoyed reading the background, I'm really enjoying the, the history. I know that there is a lot of critiques because it's a break from the old uh, wall. But here, what I want to do is to share with you the, the history. I will do it in, a, in a smaller videos, and I will try to cover um, in each video one of the big books, uh, where, and I will follow the book just to show you how, what is the flow of the history. This one is the Warhammer Age of Sigmar, is the, the main book that was uh, just launched after, uh, at the beginning of Age of Sigmar, and I want to start here because this is where everything starts. So first of all, as a background, we have to know that um, the, uh, the wall is composed of different realms. So we have Azir, the realm of heavens, we have Akshi, the realm of fire, we have Shish, the realm of death, we have Giran, the realm of life, Hish, the realm of light, Gur, the realm of beast, uh, Shamon, the realm of metal, Ulgu, the realm of shadows, and then we have the chaos. So these are the eight realms, and chaos is the last one. That is not really a realm, is where the chaos are coming from. So starting from there, uh, the story starts that uh, Sigmar was rescued from the space. So we know that there is this is the pantheon of chaos. Okay, so let's start from the beginning. Um, we can explain here. We have uh, the pantheon of chaos. These are the guys that wants to conquer the world, and we have Korn, Nargal, Fench, and Slanish, and, and then we have the Great um, Hornrad. That is part of the chaos, but it has a different agenda than I will say the other th uh, four gods. The four gods are allied and at the same time are enemies between them. Um, I will just flow to where the history starts, okay, and I will start. I will start here. Uh, this is where it is explained that Sigmar was uh, rescued from the void by the Dvakothian, and then the Dvakothian and yeah, in, empowered him to start uh, exploring the world. Uh, in this explosion of the world, Sigmar discovered the different realms that we have explained before, and he made alliances with the different gods. And yeah, was to, when was talk about the different gods uh, like Alariel, uh, Makhalid, um, we also have Nagash. So he made the pantheon, and this was come. This was called the Age of Myth, when all the gods were more or less living in harmony. All the different realms were living in harmony. Of course, there were some wars between the different uh, races, but. Uh, was, uh, we'll say, the, the golden age of uh, Sigmar. But then, after that, the chaos is streak on the wall. The chaos is streak, uh, this was explained very fast in the history, so you can see, but this is the background, so the chaos is streaks, and there was a, a series of wars. And there is a, a key point that is called the All Gates, uh, that is, the, where, is a nexus from where you can access to all the realms. So the realm to travel between realms, you have the what is called the realm gates. Uh, this is the only way to travel. Then there is some connections between the realms, and also there is what is called the all gates or the all the yeah. It's a, it's a nexus where you have gates to all the realms, and this was a, a strategic accomplishment, and is where um, chaos start attacking. Uh, Archaon was leading the attack of Chaos against the All Points and they were resisting but there was a moment that Nagash betrayed uh, Sigmar from the Pantheon, Alariel uh, started having his own, uh, her own agenda, Gorka Morka, the god of the, of the Orcs, of the Orcs, also started not uh, aligning with Sigmar and uh, suddenly Chaos was winning the battle again the old gates and having access, very easy access to the different realms. 
uh, at that moment Sigmar, when he saw that the battle was lost, he decided to uh, close the, the heavens, so he decided to close all the gates that drive to heavens and just close heavens to the rest of the wall and uh, isolating the heavens, isolating Azir from the rest of the wall. Uh, the Kels, uh, they did not care too much at the beginning and they just invading all the different realms. Nagash was really uh, destroyed, was really damaged. The, the, all the different realms was, were invaded by chaos and the resistance was quite futile. During all this period of war, Sigmar was not idle. He did two things. First, he, uh, together with the dwarf um, god, he decided to create a new weapon that is called the, it will cause the Stone Cast Eternals. They built new um, armors and new weapons for heroes that will that will uh, help to reconquer the realms from the chaos. And at the same time, Sigmar was rescuing the, the souls of the most mighty heroes against the war of the chaos. So in that way, he was start forging an army that is called the Stormcast Eternals in Azir. So during this period, he was, yeah, he was observing how all the different realms were attacked and were absorbed by the chaos forces, but at the same time he was rescuing some of the most mighty heroes, people that hate chaos, people that fight to the last stand, the mm, mm, leaders of different tribes that were uh, slaughtered by chaos, and he was rescuing all these uh, souls uh, to be able to make an army that will reconquer the realms after that. So here we see uh, another important one, well, here we see um, Sigmar fighting chaos. One important point on all this war in the old gates, Sigmar fights against green demons. There was a moment that he was going to fight against Archeon and he threw the hammer to hit Archeon. He was fooled by Thench and he lost Galmarath, what is the hammer of Sigmar. He, this was the point of inflection, this was the point of inflection that made Sigmar to close all the gates. So when he lost Galmarath, he realized that he cannot fight all the wars, he cannot be everywhere and he needs a strong army to support him. This was the idea why he closed Azir to the rest of the wall and why he decided to start building up an army that can fight chaos in future. So. Yeah, this is talking about the, the Great Alliance. Uh, this is side history, this is more the origin of the Fire Slayers. Uh, this is the god of the Fire Slayers that is called Grimnir. He fight in the realm of fire against a behemoth, against a, 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 a big beast, and they kill each other. And the explosion or the death of uh, Grimnir is what uh, scattered the Urug or the Urug gold all over the realms and is why the first layers are looking for this gold. It's not because they are uh, looking for richness, it's because the gold are the, supposed to be part of the god destroyed. They, they destroyed themselves. So they are, this is the first moment that we see that they are beasts that are beyond, uh, that are really behemoths that are living also in the realms. So yeah, then we, there is some background. I will not go to, to this because this was the introduction. So we just can skip all the explanations of the different races. Of course, we have the races and their affinity, some races for some of the realms, for example, Orrooks and the destru uh, destruction, the faction of destruction is more familiar in the um, realm of beast. We have the Sylvaneth are more in the realm of life. They travel with the realms. But what we have here is Azir, so we have Azir, this is supposed to be what is remaining of the old wall and is surrounded by a big city where uh, uh, the, Sigmar, the, the followers of Sigmar are living. Uh, just to show, this is, um, there was a moment where Sigmar is observing the, the other realms and he is very concerned because he sees that the chaos has really advanced in all the other realms and if he is not um, going into action, most likely if he's too late, 
maybe there is nothing to rescue. So there, this was the moment that he decided that he needs to attack, uh, strike back to the chaos. Here we have Sigma observing and then is when we have the opening of the heavens and is where the real world, the real gate wars starts. So this is the start of the real world gates and the first the first uh, to strike were uh, the Stormcast Eternals. So, um, as I said, Sigma decided to strike back. The way he's striking, uh, he's striking at the beginning is he's using the lightnings to transport teleporting tubes into the realms. But he knows that he has very limited access, he will limit the flow of the tubes, so he needs to start controlling some realm gates and open them to Azir. To be able to open the, the gates uh, from Azir to the rest of the world, he needs troops in both sides of the gate. So he needs to send some vanguard guy, um, troops to start opening these gates. So the, the first attacks uh, that I registered were in, in the realm of fire, in Giran, the realm of life, and in Shamon, the realm of metal. And one of the first to strike was in Bandur's Handel Hammer. He is from the Hammers of Sigma, and he they strike on on the realm of fire on the Brimstone Peninsula. So they strike in the middle of a Bloodbone army, and his objective was to open the gate, what open a gate that allows the troops waiting on the other side to attack the realm of fire. So they just teleport like lightning in the middle of the block bone. And after a big fight against, because they were fighting, they start, you see here this hole, they strike, they need to open the gate. And they start fighting against uh, a guy that is called, uh, I forgot now the name, Kogul, Korgul Kul, who is a mighty hero of our mighty, um, warrior champion of Korn. So they fight against his troops, there was a, a big fight, but he, at the end, they were successful and they managed to open the gate uh, to the realms. Uh, there was a moment, a critical moment, where Bandus Handelhammer fights uh, a tet to tet against uh, the, the mighty lord of Korn. Uh, he almost win the battle, but when he's going to do the last, uh, the the yeah, the the killing blow, uh, there was a big shift on the battle, and he didn't manage to do that. And Corvus Wolkul was rescued from the hands of um, Bandus Handelhammer. Okay. So the instructions of Bandus was to hold the position to let uh, the troops um, from the heavens to come in. He was succeeding on that, but then he realized that uh, the Bloodborne was doing a ritual. He read information that there was a, a big pyramid of, his, of his schools, and um, the, the hero or the, the mighty champion of Korn was trying to make a ritual to open a rift, to open a gate directly to the chaos. So he decides to attack Again, the block boom with the troops he had available and was not all really set up yet because was quite in a hurry. Uh, was a big fight. The open the the gate was opening, and and at the end again there was a fight one uh, one to one between uh, Bandus Handelhammer and Corvus Gul, uh, and that time the priority of Bandus was to really close the, the gate. So he managed to destroy the gate that uh, Korgul was trying to open it, uh, giving his life. But yeah, this was um, how this, the history starts in the, in the realm of fire. So it was really the introduction. So the, the the Stormcast strike, they managed to open a realm gate and they managed to stop the chaos to open a gate to the realm of chaos. But the war was just starting because chaos have millions of followers in that realm 
and they only have some thousands at this moment of Stormcast Eternals so there is really a long war to fight on the, uh, in the realm of fire so here we have, and the good is we have a scenarios to play all this okay, and then the next uh, part of this story we jump to, the, to Giran, the realm of life where the uh, Hollow Knights are sent to do the same work that Bandus was doing in that in, in, in the realm of fire. So in the realm of life they had two missions again open the gates to be able to have more reinforcement but most important was to find Alariel. Alariel is another is a, the goodness of life. She was uh, an ally of Sigmar so she wants to have her in his life and wants to avoid that she is contaminated by the chaos and dark forces, dark uh, uh, forces. So they attack, they go straight to against a gate, but then they realize that the gate was contaminated by chaos. So there was a big rift between, a big battle between uh, chaos and, and the Stormcast Eternals. Uh, they were, they, the battle was shifting to one side and the other. There was a moment that the, the knights were winning, but then they sent more and more and more reinforcement from the gate. A big Gibetum Kling once also came from the gate, it was the leader of the troops, sending more and more forces. Uh, Sigmar sent also more reinforcements from his side, and at the end even the Silvaneth um, went into battle. But they realized that even as many reinforcements they sent, they have to, they are sending, there was no way to stop chaos from uh, keep, um, coming into the uh, the world here we see the different battles, how all the different stormholes are striking on, on the map but the, for, the reinforcements of uh, Norgal looks to be infinite, they were endless in reinforcement so the only possibility they have is to close the gate and there was an epic moment when Gardus, the Lord Celestine of, uh, of the Hollow Knights, is fighting uh, against the great unclean one, uh, try to close the door, try to close the gate, and yeah, in this fight, at the end, he find the, he saw the opportunity, and he just destroyed the realm gate. But by doing that, he get trapped in the side of the chaos. So the whole knights lost his leader because the leader was in the side of the chaos, so he was trapped in the realm of chaos but he, they managed to close the gate and after closing the gate they were able to destroy the units of Norgal that were crossing, that they had crossed the, the, the realm gate. So this was a bitter win for the Stormcast Eternals but there was no information about Alariel and they did not manage to open a gate to Azir because the gate that was supposed to be open was really contaminated by the chaos and was directly uh, was going directly to the realm of chaos. So they need the the only thing is that they managed to align with the Sylvaneth from the world of Giran. And yeah, this was the different battles and how this occurs. I'm feeling quite fast. I just want to give you the uh, the main uh, the main uh, history. Uh, okay, and then the last part is uh, on Chamon, on the wall of metal again they arrive by uh, the storm and in that case uh, was the... Uh, how it's called this? Oh, I forgot the name now it was the Celestial Vindicators that is right there so when they arrive uh, there there was a uh, a magus or a sorcerer of Thench and when he saw these guys arriving he decided that he is going to attack them but he really subestimated the power of these guys the, the, the sorcerer of Thench had have a, a very special weapon hidden in his uh, fortress he, he really uh, don't know what is the origin of this power, but he has some power, some uh, power that he don't, doesn't want to share with his peers. He doesn't want to uh, lose, lose against Sigmar. So he is very, uh, uh, quite aggressive, defensive, and he decides 
to, to try to kill the, the threat of the Stormcast as they arrive. But he completely failed, he was overrun, he had to run back to his fortress. So here we see how they arrive, they were strike, but they have to run back to the fortress. And the Celestial Vindicators, they, they were really, they are very aggressive, they are really Vindicators, and they decide to attack the, to attack the fortress. They decide to give a good, uh, yeah, to, 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 uh, be, to have their own vengeance, so they attack the Eldritch Fortress. So, really, they, they are arrived there and they were winning by far the assault to the fortress. So when the sorcerer of Sench it detected, is realizing that he's going to lose the battle, he activated the sacred weapon and a, a big uh, a bright light just appeared and killed everybody there. So really he activated the weapon and was a big f um, light of flash killing everybody. And here is where we finish, we see Bandus, Bandus was killed by Kolgur when he destroyed the totem. And here we have also uh, the, the boss or the, the Lord Celestine of the Celestial Vindicators in front of Sigmar. And this is where we finish the book and is when Sigmar realized that what have destroyed the Celestial Vindicators was not the powers of chaos, was not a sacred weapon of the chaos. But destroy the Vindicators was the power of the Galmarath. So now Sigmar know where is Galmarath and start the next phase that is the quest for Galmarath. He gave the order to them to lead the attack against Galmarath. So they are going to be reforged because it's time, this is a thing that we need to know, it's time that a, a, a Stormcast Eternal is killed in combat, is sent back to the heavens. The, the soul is sent back to the heavens and they are reforged in flesh and metal into a new soldier. Uh, they, it's time this happens, it looks like they lose part of his personality or the personality is a little bit shift or change. And this will, we will see this on, on the, on the uh, Lord Celeste and on the Celestial Vindicators. But yeah, they, they, are, they need to be reforged and they will be sent back to the realm of Shaman, try to recover the Galmarath. And here is where we finish. This is just the introduction. Three attacks, one on the realm of fire, quite successful. They opened the gate and they managed to, uh, to start conquering the, the realm of fire. A lot of work to be done. Another one was a, quite a, a bitter attack. The, the realm gate was contaminated and they didn't find Alariel, so now we have the quest for Alariel in Giran. And then in Shaman, they was the, the, the Celestial Vindicators were annihilated by a strange magic power and it happens that the magic power was coming from the Galmarath. So they discovered where Galmarath is and they will start the quest for Galmarath. And this is for the first part when I want to start. I will co try to cover one book on each of my uh, chapters. Uh, I forgot to mention at the beginning, I will put a comment, write a comment. Uh, I, you will have the spoilers because I want to explain the history. I want to really engage you on the history of what is Warhammer, Edge of Sigmar, what is the fluff, because I think it's being underestimated. And, and to be fair, if you just read this book, you need no, the novels give more depth in some of the parts, but these books give a very like I will say like the backbone of the history, so you will know what is the main points of the history of the fluff on the Age of Sigmar. That's all for now. Please leave your comment below. Let me know what do you think. Let me know if you like this type of videos, uh, if you find this interesting or not. And yeah, um, like if you like it and share if you think that can be interesting for other people. As usual, thanks a lot for watching and see you again later. Bye.